All right, everyone. My name is uh, Brian Hirsch, and I am the lead person for the Career Center in the Ryan College of Business. There's four full-time staff that work with the, we, uh, as of yesterday, the day before, we were up to 7,300 students, which would be a record enrollment in the College of Business. So we're really excited about that. We thank you guys for, for um, you know, for, for the part you're playing in that, and it's gonna be a really uh, exciting year. Um, we showed this yesterday in our session, but I just wanted to once again uh, uh, reemphasize that we've got a lot of events coming up uh, in the Career Center. These are our main career fairs, which are upcoming starting at the end of, of September, including a career fair for business, uh, 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 business career and internship fair. And there'll be both, both an in-person version of that and a, um, uh, a, a virtual version. So the 23rd is in person, 24th of September is a, uh, gonna, be, gonna be a virtual session. Um, just a couple of things uh, to, to remind you about. Um, there, uh, if you, uh, Handshake is our gateway system. Again, we talked about that a little bit yesterday for finding jobs, internships, part-time jobs, on-campus employment, and a bunch of other stuff. Um, we have an approved resume format. If you're taking Business 1200, you're probably going to hear about that. It's not required, but it is approved, uh, and we know that it works with employers, so that's the reason why we try to get as many students to do that as you can. Um, and um, those are the main things. So um, now, without further ado, I'd like to, to, to start by telling you that this session uh, is, what we've done is we brought together a group of alumni who graduated in just the last few years. Uh, they're being very successful out there in the world of work. And uh, they're just a great role models for you to understand and talk about how to be successful as a business student. And so uh, what we'll do is I'm going to have all the panelists uh, introduce themselves. Uh, and uh, then um, if you guys could just uh, your name, uh, what you majored in, uh, where you work, and what's your job. Uh, and then we'll continue on with the, with the panel. Yeah. And Tyler, go ahead. Yeah, um, nice to meet you guys. I'm Tyler Anderson, graduated in 2015, uh, major in finance. <clears throat> I'm working at Texas Capital Bank in Dallas, and what I do is funds management, financial analysts, so trading bonds, um, and then doing financial analysis for a bank um, on most, mostly the balance sheet side of things. So, awesome. How's everybody doing? Uh, my name is Mr. Joshua Barr. Um, my bad, I still got a school, uh, a school that came from uh, high school right now, so I have to do myself as that. Um, I actually graduated in 2018 and uh, majored in marketing. Uh, my job is simply to be myself. I don't really uh, work for anybody, but I work and go in different schools, uh, helping them implement my nonprofit program. So uh, that's what I do. Hi, I'm Brooklyn. I graduated in 2019 in business real estate. Now I am working for Bell Partners, which is a property management company. Um, I'm a leasing manager at one of our properties. Hi, I'm Delicia. Um, I graduated in 2021, uh, this past spring, and I currently work at Price Waterhouse Coopers, PwC, uh, as an external auditor. And yeah. Okay. All right. Delicia, why don't you uh, just uh, keep the floor and just tell us a little bit about uh, your, your family. Um, did your parents go to college? You know, those kinds of things. Okay. Um, my mom went to college and my dad, he did some college, but they together, they own a business and it started off kind of as um, construction kind of, and it's just moved into more of contracting. And that's kind of how I, I think got into wanting to go into business was just like being around them and seeing how, uh, I guess, how they run their business. And um Let's see, I went to high school in Louisiana and then moved to Texas. Um, and then before coming to UNT, I started off going to TCC uh, just because I was new to the Texas area. And so I didn't know 
um, much about the schools here and really what I wanted to do. And so I went there um, for my first two years. And then I ended up just transferring to UNT because um, just location wise, um, it was nearby and um, the campus seemed pretty nice. And when I transferred, I originally had the intent to study finance because I really liked investing and just, I just kind of liked that world. And um, after transferring and taking accounting uh, 2010, then that's when I decided I wanted to study accounting instead. And from there, um, I have always been really glad that I made that decision and I've never really like kind of looked back on it. So uh, I came from a single family household. I just had my mom. Um, she raised three of us girls all on her own. She was a teacher for Aubrey ISD. So um, didn't come from a very wealthy background at all. She didn't go to college. She was just really focused on raising us. Um, so that's why I had the motivation to go to college so I could one day get back to her. Um, I am from Aubrey, which is not too far from here. It's about 20 minutes. So I um, grew up around this area. My grandparents actually lived like right down the street. So I knew I wanted to go here um, for business in general. I grew up a lot of, around a lot of like real estate families. A lot of our family friends were in real estate. So I was always just exposed to that. And they seemed like they were crushing it. So I was like, why not? Took Bain's intro to real estate class, fell in love, and that's what I knew. <laughs> wow. I was actually born and raised in Nigeria. Anybody know what they said? Awesome. I was born and raised there, and I uh, came here when I was about 12 years old. Uh, a little bit about my background my dad and my mom, they were actually teachers. Uh, so I couldn't really escape the education system. <laughs> I was kind of expecting to go to college, you know, but uh, I grew up with that. and. Uh, Coming over here, I actually wanted to uh, major in, uh, in biology because anybody who ever had African parents, you know, they push for you to be in science. You had your African parents at home? Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> so they pushed me to be in science. Almost I wanted to be a doctor, but that was not really what I wanted. And uh, when I, and I found that out by having a D in biology. Uh, that was a, a big eye opener for me. Gave me great revelation. Uh, so <laughs> went about and I came to business college and now I'm here and I love it. So that's it. Um, so I'm from Wisconsin. My parents, uh, my family still lives in Wisconsin. My mom's a, a first grade teacher. My dad's a dairy farmer. Um, so my dad did not go to college. My mom did. Um, and really, I guess as far as like coming to Texas, like I went to school at Wisconsin my freshman year um, and then kind of wanted to get out of Wisconsin and do something else. And really actually had my, like, as far as Texas schools that I applied to was like TCU and SMU, but couldn't really like, I, I ended up getting a scholarship here. And, and basically what had happened was um, like, my parents are not necessarily wealthy whatsoever. So um, when it came down to like choose where you're going to go to school, it was like either like go to UNT um, on scholarship or go to like TCU or SMU. Um, and really, I, I guess I just came down here to UNT and, and really I felt like a, like a community, like the first few people that I met here um, was just awesome. Like they took me under, under their wing. Um, and as far as my business, like interests, um, honestly, like just growing up with my dad, like being a farmer, going to the bank, like the banker was always like dressed nice and like it was kind of fancy going into the bank. You got a sucker in the and honestly, that's really like the that's the only kind of way that I started to like get a little bit of interest in high school and business. Um, and so knew that I was going to do finance right away. So Josh, when you started and you decided to do and you switched from biology to marketing, you decided to do marketing, what was your goal at that point for what you were going to do with your degree? Don't fail. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when I started, um, I was actually afraid to tell my dad. I felt like he was going to... Uh, Maybe you might be familiar with this word. Uh, what is it? Announce me <laughs> as a son. So I actually did it secretly. True story. I did it secretly. So I started off and I went there. When I got to marketing, I had no clue what 
what to do. I just knew that, hey, this is something that interests me. I love, again, with the suits. Mm-hmm. I know I didn't want to wear a white, <laughs> you know. I just loved it. And uh, one of the things that, that really was, was helpful was meeting the, the professors here mm-hmm. and their interest in me learning. I think uh, one of them was, uh, he thought, is it marketing? He thought marketing, I forgot his name. Um, but it's not super, it was, it was it's the other one. I think it was Housel. And just the passion there was really just amazing for me. And I came here and I said, you know what? This is something I want to learn. I want to learn, meet, I want to learn about people and whatnot. And uh, let me check it out. So it was an interesting thing. And second year in, third year in, I'm like, wow, I love it. <laughs> you know, this is what I want to do. So it wasn't until I first started my first business in college that I went to my dad and, you know, showed, hey, dad, look, I'm doing business now. And he's like, oh, great, I'm proud of you. <laughs> you can make it. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so uh, Brooklyn, you said you, you took Dr. Bain's class. Yes. So the, you, you, the, uh, every single one of you will hear about Dr. Bain probably sooner rather than later in, in the College of Business. Oh, God. He's, no, 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 he's in a good way. He loves his students. He, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He's, he's, you know, he's a trip. He, he, he's forgotten more about real estate than probably almost anybody in DFW knows. I mean, I'm, the guy's brilliant. Uh, but anyway, so um, did you know that you wanted to be in property management or how did you kind of work your way from, oh, I really like Dr. Bain, yeah. so I want to do real estate, but uh, but. How did you figure out that that's what you wanted to do? So really, I didn't know what I wanted to do in real estate. I initially wanted to be on like a more commercial side. So like bigger buildings, not residential or anything. I didn't want to be a realtor, do that. Um, So honestly, it was, I think, my sophomore year or junior year here. Um, And I needed a job. I needed to start paying these bills, you know. So I got on Indeed. And there was a job for a leasing agent, and I was like, well, I can do this while going to school. You know, it'll give me a little bit of, like, intro, um, basic learning, you know. I started that and went, I worked there full-time and took classes full-time, so it was a lot. But I think doing it during school really helped, like, my coursework, too, because I was getting actual experience. So that's how I got into it. Indeed. <laughs> and I might just say Shaman's plug for handshake and the and the realtor real um, property management companies we work with a lot of them because we have a property management program in the college. And so at any given time, if you want to get a part time job like as a leasing agent with any of these apartment complexes in Denton, we probably there's probably going to be jobs in there. Okay, and that's just one example. So. Did you always know, you said you started off in finance. Mm-hmm. What caused your sort of switch to accounting and then the decision to go do public accounting? Um, going from finance to accounting, I would say that I really um, liked the exactness of accounting, whereas finance, it's kind of, you have a very big like, ballpark number that it, it can be you know, from this range to this, and it's very um, focused kind of on the future aspect, whereas accounting is focused on what's already happened, and it comes down to a like, very detailed um, number, I think, and so I really like that. I think that kind of fit my personality more, and um, also just within the college of business here, um, the accounting program has such a um, detailed uh, I guess program. I mean, you know exactly. You recruit during a certain semester. You um, do this. Like it's kind of all laid out, and I really like that as well. Um, just being able to kind of see like a laid out plan and um, going into public accounting, of course. Um, so there's there's two terms of you can go into industry or you can go into public. And with industry, that's kind of the jobs more of like if you're going to work at Amazon or um, any any business really where you're working on their accounting staff, um, or if you're working as a controller or CFO or anything like that, and then you have public accounting, and that's where you 
as as it says, like you work with a public almost. And so um, every publicly traded company, such as Amazon, they have to have their financial statements uh, audited. And so that's where public accounting comes in and they go through and um, just say, hey, like, hey, you know, these are good. And the reason why I went into public accounting is just because it opens up a lot more doors if if I wanted to go somewhere else later, like if I did want to go into the industry as a CFO or anything, um, going into public accounting first kind of opens up those doors and gives you um, adequate training and kind of lets you see um, a lot more industries. And so instead of just going straight into one, like Amazon, for instance, you can go, you can see Amazon, you can see JP Morgan, you can see whatever, you know, all these different companies and businesses and really kind of get a feel for what it is that you want to do. And of course, you can just stay in public and retire there. So there's plenty of options. And I think I really liked that. And especially as, you know, a young person and as a student and you have all these different options and all these different career plans, and all these majors and, and so many choices. And, and it's hard to kind of pick like, how am I supposed to pick what I'm going to do for the rest of my life right now? And I just really don't know. And that's something that I did like about accounting is because you can kind of go anywhere with it and you can make some early on decisions that still leave you plenty of options later on. As you mentioned that, you know, PricewaterhouseCooper, Fortune 100 company, it's one of the top four accounting firms and they're inter international, right? So um, we have a lot of our graduates that go on and work in those kinds of organizations. So, um, I, um, Brooklyn, when you began to sort of figure out what your goals were as a business major, what steps did you take to ensure that you were going to get there? So I think the first thing Bain said in his class was get drunk and be somebody. <laughs> and I took that as like make yourself known, you know, go out there, meet new people, make yourself known to, you never know who you're talking to. Even in these classrooms, you could be working with somebody. I mean, Y'all could be working with each other one day or work for them. So it was really just like finding my circle of people within the um, program and really like linking with them, staying connected. Um, I got involved with the real estate um, group or club. And uh, even though I was working full time, I tried to stay involved as much as I can, like just going to the events and really just using it as a networking opportunity. And uh, I mean, after even after college, I'm still connected. I'm now the president of the alumni real estate group. So I'm still connected to everybody. And, you know, the new graduates, I like bring them in and we just have a really amazing group of, you know, industry professionals that we can all go to for really anything. So. 1,400 members in yeah, the real estate Yeah, there's a lot now. Like 1,400. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. There's a lot of good opportunities in that group, too. People are always posting jobs. <laughs> Josh, how did you uh, go about kind of... You, you were running your own small businesses when you were in undergrad. Yeah, it's amazing. So how did you go about being do, uh, ensuring that you're going to reach your career goals? Awesome. Uh, I think... My background really, really helped me a lot. Uh, one of the things I never said about my family was I lost my mom two weeks before my eight-year-old birthday. Uh, so growing up as a kid, I grew up really fast. And uh, I, was, I was very driven with financial freedom um, because I grew up poor. Uh, so I wanted to have, that was my major, major thing. So when I came to business, I actually didn't know a major now, we, if I knew what I know now, I probably would have been real estate. You know? <laughs> I didn't know any major that helped me with entrepreneurship, but I went that route. And that was something that was interesting to me because I wanted to not just help my family, but also help people back in Nigeria. So the way I navigated that was really utilizing Handshake. And I'm not talking about the UNT's app, but literally Handshake, shaking the hands of people, getting to know people, getting to connect with them. And really uh, expressing yourself, you know, being able to say this, being able to be sure of who you really are and what it is you want to do, you know, uh, just being able to not express myself in a way of sharing my passion with others. You know, that passion led me to being able to publish seven books, you know, and one of them is actually at Walmart. And 
being able to really pour into people, that was my major thing. And I did that through literally going to handshake, going to professors. Hey, my name is just Josh. My name is Joshua. What is your name? Can you help me? You know, going around really getting to meet people. Now you can't do that because of COVID, but you can, you can give your card or something. <laughs> online, do an online answer, right? An email answer. But really connecting with people was really what helped me navigate and find the best uh, option for my personal goals. So. There's a, there's a concept that we put forward. It's called planned happenstance. And that means be ready to meet somebody who can help you move forward. Absolutely. Um, we talk about that some in Business 1200, but Josh is like the poster person for that. I mean, you know, it's, it's amazing that he got in that mindset early on. If he met somebody in this, you never know on any given day, by the way, one of these, these four people might be here. Or we might have a CEO from a major corporation coming to talk to a class. And my question is, is, are you prepared for that? Right? So, and sometimes a professor tells you beforehand, sometimes they don't. Right? Tyler, what did you do? You, you ended up in, you're doing investment. In, yeah, so I, I, I run like money. an investment portfolio. Yeah. Uh, so how did you, how did you, uh, when did you decide that that's what you wanted to do? Because you do banking. And then what did you do to get there? Yeah, so I guess the way I always like treated it is like I knew like, it, like you picture like an airplane, like runway. I knew that there was a bunch of stuff that I could be interested in and I could just try any of those. Um, and so, like, I guess when I was at UNT, like, I just treated, like, school like it was my job. Like, I worked part-time in the evenings as well, but I treated, like, being on campus as, like, my nine to five. So I was always in the PLB here. Um, and, like, I just, I just remember, like, I read everything. I Honestly, I couldn't, like, believe when I would come into class and people, like, didn't read the textbooks. Like, you have to, they're so expensive. Um, and like people ask, like I've done a few of these UNT things before. It's like, what do you read? I'm like, well, just start with the textbook and like we'll go from there because um, everybody who I work with, like that's the baseline. Everybody reads it. Um, and so I just worked really hard at understanding the concepts because nobody in my family knew anything about that. Um, and then kind of the, to Joshua's um, point is I met a ton of people here at UNT and that's how I started working at Texas Capital Bank. Our CFO is a UNT alum, and it was through a student organization. We had her on campus for a speaking event, and with Dean Wiley and Kevin Fralix, who used to be here, um, met Julie, our CFO, and that's kind of how I got hooked up with Texas Capital. Um, and so that is like UNT got my job for me. Um, and so it was just, again, working hard and then to your point, shaking hands and like meeting people um, is so important. Yeah, uh, and 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 you found Brooklyn was part. Well, Josh, were you in a student organization? Yeah, I actually started one. <laughs> you started them. Yeah. Okay. And then, uh, um, Delisha, you were in student organizations. Which one? Uh, I was in Beta Alpha Psi. Beta Alpha Psi, which is the top level accounting. Uh, and there's several other accounting organizations that are out there. We have four, I think, in the college. So all four were in student organizations. And, and actually, like, so I was on campus all the time. This is our first day that we met, but, like, I, he was on campus, like, all the time with me. Like, we always pass each other. We never talked or anything, but, um, like, I'd recognize you. And, and so those, there's a few people who I just, you start to see around all the time. And the professors and staff members who walk through, and Dean Wiley always walks, like, straight through the atrium. Um, and so it's just if you're a repetitive face, they'll sure. reach out to you and see how you're doing. So. Um, uh, Tyler, um, talk about some of the pitfalls, some things to wa watch out for that can really get you hung up and get you off on the wrong track. Yeah, I um, actually wrote a few down. So I, I said, especially like freshman year, like you get so much time. Dude, like you have so much time and so like I think the pitfalls are like not creating good habits and if you you have the opportunity to stay in your apartment or your dorm room and stay home and be comfortable um, and that is a very easy habit to get into and it's a really hard one to break um, so I have that one down um, not preparing in advance um, so many times like people want to get internships 
And they don't realize that internship application season is September through November for a summer internship. So by the time that you get to February and March, it is like already too late. And so just knowing your deadlines and, and really having that time management skill, if you start off on a bad foot, it's a really hard habit to break. Josh, good thoughts. You said um, what time what time periods are, do the internships? Start? Um, so it will depend, but like so finance, like uh, a lot of finance um, internships, application season, um, and this is kind of like sophomore, junior, um, summers after sophomore and junior year, but those those internship applications close in the fall. Um, and so most people know where you're going to intern by October for the following summer. Um, and it's actually like, it's one thing because there's so many, so much stuff goes on at the beginning of the school year, like football season, everyone's classes are starting. It's so exciting. And you just whip right through September and October and then internship applications are closed. So, um, but that also just goes into like, also like preparing for tests and exams, things like that. Um, always just be the most prepared person in the class. Yeah, Tyler's right about the, the timelines. It, it's somewhat industry specific. So depending on what your major is and what you want to do, you need to check with my office. You need to talk to your professors so that you know in banking and finance industry, especially with big like Wall Street type banks and that kind of thing, they recruit you very early. We have some other industries like supply chain and logistics. This might be later on, you know, in the year or more of a just-in-time kind of thing. But check with us so that you know and don't wait. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Josh. Good Absolutely. Uh, one of my pitfalls, I'll, I'll use my personal one. Uh, I was kind of held back, you know, as a as a student or as a person with my dad, kind of sheltered. So when I came in, I was like, yeah, I'll get to be home and be free. Uh, then that didn't work out too well my freshman year. You know, you, you get a lot of free time uh, and you can go to class on your own. The teacher is not like banging on your door, like, hey, get up. They don't really even send you emails if you miss class. You know, like, so all of those different things, that responsibility aspect was something that you have to make sure you have before you start, uh, before you take your classes, being responsible. And another thing was really knowing yourself. Um, now, one of the things, like like I told you earlier, I switched my majors, you know, and, and that's one thing that I did. And at first, when I was about to do it, I was like, oh, my God, this is going to be a big mistake. But knowing yourself well enough to know what it is you like and not being afraid to not turn around. One of my pitfalls was it took me a longer time to make that turnaround. I really never wanted to do biology in the very beginning, you know, but I did it because my dad wanted me to do it. And I could have easily turned around earlier on. Fortunately, it worked out well, but I would have learned so much more, probably would have connected with more people earlier if I made an earlier turnaround. So really knowing yourself and studying yourself is very critical to your success. So. If you failed in marketing, what was your backup plan? If I failed in marketing? Yeah, like if you're not where you are today. Because I know you have to like prepare yourself for being prepared, uh -huh. but Mistakes is kind of like the teacher of failure. Absolutely. So I kind I so I just want to know like if you made if you like made like some like not several mistakes like uh -huh. some mistakes. Mm -hmm. What would your backup plan in case like if you want to keep ma majoring in like business or you like switch something like that? You know, there's a statement that goes, "Experience is the best teacher," mm -hmm. but in reality, it's not. Uh, other people's experience is the best teacher. So for me, understanding with different mistakes, I really had no plan B. I wanted to be successful. Um, if I had failed in marketing, that would just been an avenue to success. Marketing was not my end goal. My end goal was really to be successful. So if I had failed in marketing, I would have found another avenue, but I had no plan B. It was just what I loved and it would have been something in business, but that was not my end goal. It was a route to my end goal. So if I had failed in that route, I simply would have found another route because I still wanted to get to my end goal no matter what. So, okay, yeah. It's a great answer. Yeah, thank you. Pitfalls. Um, my pitfall was one that I experienced, and that was becoming a little too eager. Um, I guess I mean by like comparing yourself to others and like where they're at on their journey. That was a big thing for me. Like, I mean, there was 
kids in my class like already buying real estate, like already investing here, like building apartments. And I was like, well, I haven't started any of that. So I kind of got down on myself, you know, I was like, well, should I be here? Like, why am I down here? But what I, you know, learned was everybody grows and learns at their own pace. You just have to allow yourself time. Um, you know, don't give up just because, you know, your friends are out here making their own success. Use that as motivation for you to be better. So that was, I got down a lot because I was like, well, if they're doing that, like, why am I not? But then I kind of flipped the switch and used that as my motivation. Not to be, like, better than them or anything, but, you know, to learn and grow within myself. So that's my um, To kind of... Uh, follow along with what Tyler was saying about um, creating the good habits early on. Um, I think one of the pitfalls I kind of faced every single semester, and I would say, okay, like the last time I'm doing this, you know, next semester will be different, and you know, have it again each semester. But um, early on, just create a plan, like stay on top of your assignments and studying and reading and all those different things because it can kind of really catch up to you and you know your exam comes up and you're not prepared and then you know you say okay for the next exam or you know whatever and it's just kind of a never-ending cycle and um I mean I'm guilty of it I still did it every single semester I would put things off and um but each semester I did get better and better and you know slowly I did improve but that would be something that I really wish I would have done like from the very beginning just just do it. I mean, you're you're here, you're in college and you are paying to come here or you're on scholarship to come here or, you know, your parents, whoever it is, like it does cost money from somewhere to be here. And so I think that you should take advantage of that and, you know, get what it is that you're paying for and you're paying for an education. And, you know, for most of the end goal of college is to get a job, but really you should take advantage of the fact that the education aspect of it because the job can come and go you can get a job anywhere you can be at the job that you get after college for a year 10 years whatever it is education is something that's going to stay with you forever and people that you meet and the different things that you learn the um, perspectives that you develop and the habits and skill sets and whatever it is that you develop in college are what's going to be going with you forward and so Anything that you do in college, like it's easily transferable to the real world or, you know, to working and after college and different things like that. So studying and um, starting on your assignments early, like that can translate into, a, you know, a job skill, working on your tasks early, like learning how to manage your time, different things like that. And so that, that's something that I really wish I would have started early and, and I guess with full intention instead of just kind of, you know, slacking off or just like, mm, okay. And um, I think that would have definitely, I guess, benefited me more had I, but um, you live and learn, I guess. But that would be like my top advice. I think it's just like, you're here for a reason. You're here now, like take advantage of it. So Belisa, we'll stay with, with you. Um, as far as skill sets go that you're that you're using in the workplace now, that you either wish that you would have been better at, you know, and could have worked on while you were a student, or you wish you would have known about. What what are some what are a couple of those things? Definitely soft skills. Um, learning how to communicate well, learning how to network well, learning how to explain yourself and explain your position and being confident who you are and, and what it is that you do bring to the table, um, I would say are all uh, very important qualities to have. Um, for jobs, I mean, a lot of them look at your GPA. Um, as far as I know with accounting, probably finance, um, they wanna know your GPA. They have GPA requirements usually, um, but that can only do so much for you. A lot of it, that's like, 20% of the work and the rest of it is who you are as a person and how you act. And sometimes you can be a really amazing person and you're super great, like on the inside. And that can sometimes, you, you just might struggle, I guess, with uh, showing everyone else that and letting everyone else know like that you're not 
a weird person or that like you can get along with people or that you're a good team member. So all those things might be true about you, but not everyone else can see that. And so I think learning how to, I guess, portray yourself as that um, to others is probably one of the most important um, aspects to kind of learn. Sorry to jump out of the turning, but to your point, like I actually helped with our banks recruiting for our juniors program this last year. And so I got like 20 resumes. And like as far as what you're saying, like the GPA for it, it was like a checkbox, like, hey, like they just made it. And then the interview was like the whole thing. And um it doesn't, you don't have to like necessarily be like the most outgoing person at all. Um, I actually thought the people who I enjoyed talking to the most, like creatively, were able to express like all of their strengths and their weaknesses and who they were. Um, and that probably came from just preparation of like understanding how to prepare for an interview and get everything that you were saying across to somebody else um, in 30 or 60 minutes. So, yeah. So, let me just mention one thing about, about GPA. What I, what I always advise students on GPA is the better the GPA you have, the more options you're going to have as you go forward. However, not every employer has a GPA cutoff. And so there's always going to be options for you. So don't get into a complete panic on GPA. But I do think one of the goals should be to do the best you can in school. Okay. All right. Not everybody's a 4.0 student, but that's okay. Okay. Um, uh, yes. Yeah. Um, I agree with that. I mean, as far as the soft skills, because in real estate, that's pretty much what you do is talk to people and communicate you're selling basically so and you know of course those marketing classes and all that will teach you how to sell but you have to sell yourself too so that's probably one of the main things that i would say um maybe i should have prepared myself more on because i came in as like a really shy person and then quickly in the real estate program like you can't be shy and Bain will definitely make you not be shy. He'll call on you um, every time if he knows you're shy and get you out of that shell. Uh, but I think that's why I went to the real estate program because it had such a different dynamic, at least to me, than all of the other programs. And by that, I mean, um, it was really more like getting out there and doing the real work. It wasn't like exams and textbooks and all that. I mean, of course, we still had exams and all that but um a lot of it was based off of real life projects like going to visit properties and writing up reports about them meeting with buyers like it was just more hands-on for me and I guess preparing myself for those communication skills and all that would have helped me a lot. Josh? Uh, mine is actually similar but the opposite, <laughs> you know. Uh, I actually wish I know what you know now. Uh, I never really learned so much about Excel, right? Uh, I was not really good with computers and things of that nature. But as a kid, at nine years old, I was selling honey door to door. So communication has always been something uh, that I love to do. So it was easy for me. But the tech part, I didn't, I didn't learn those things. And there were some jobs I actually missed out on because I was not good with computers. And there were so many programs here, um, things that could have taught me, you know, about Excel and things of that nature. I uh, wish I learned those a little bit early on. That would have helped me a whole lot. So uh, those are some skills that I probably go back. If I, if I could go back, I probably would uh, zone in a little bit more on that. Um, yeah. And I know you guys love your apps and everything, but I will say, and Josh is right, the single most important technical skill for a professional, business professional, regardless of what you do, is Excel. Yeah. Um, so the more you can learn about that, and the college does you a favor, because we're going to require you to get one certification in it, but the more you know beyond that, the better, the better, the more marketable you're going to be. Yes, ma'am? Would you recommend they minor in like some kind of technology field? Well, I, I'll, I'll just go because that, that's exactly what I was going to say. Um, like the people skills, like, I always working on those, but that was kind of like my strength as well. The finance, like topical stuff, like textbook terminology yep. and theories, I'm fine with that as well. 
Okay, you get into the, like some people now, like they are so damn skilled, like in Excel and like all these software programs and like the best finance people out there now, like they know Python and all this. And like, I have only been graduated for three years and I'm like, I don't understand how I got passed up or anything. Like, the skill set is there. And so to, if that is something that even like minorly interests you, I would just go for it and like do finance and then do some sort of computer technology um, minor combination of both, yeah. If you have the time now, would you, you know, want to learn these techniques? So I'm actually, like literally as of last Friday, started a course. Um, so like I devote like five to 10 hours, depending on how busy I am a week, learning Python and some coding systems. And I'm starting at like how to like type hello. Like it's, <laughs> there's, no, there's no skills there. Um, so like, again, while you have all this free time in college, it would be a great thing to add. Um, and so there are some programs out there. I don't know how UNT does it, but um, I know when I was here, they offered like different subscriptions and things like that. Or there's some, there's some um, programs out there, bundles that are fairly cheap. Um, that you could buy and work through them while you're in college and just add that skill set. It's incredibly valuable. Yeah. There's several different options. I mean, we have, uh, obviously there's classes where they, they teach that, right? And you can ask your academic advisor about, about that, how that fits into your plan of study. Um, we, uh, the university makes available to you LinkedIn Learning. It's free, it's free thing once you have a LinkedIn profile and you have a single sign-on for the university you just go to LinkedIn Learning and use your SSO and you can go in there and there's hundreds of Python courses from a three-minute overview of what it is to you know get a badge right and then there's sort of some certification programs and things like that that you can be directed towards I don't know if the university offers those per se but so lots of different options if you have questions about that, you can come talk to somebody in my office, talk to somebody in the academic advising office. That we should be able to direct you to some places where you can get more information. I want to shift here just a little bit and just open it up to the whole panel here. I want to just spend a few moments talking about diversity and equity and inclusion. And, you know, one of my, my thoughts on this is we can all always get better at how we interact interpersonally with everybody else that we're gonna be working with, interacting with, socially, whatever it is. So my question to the panel is, what can students do now to begin to prepare for that and to understand that this is important now and it will be important to them as business professionals as they move forward? Um, yeah, I'll start. So I guess um, I'm from Wisconsin. I don't know if you guys know anything about the demographics of Wisconsin. It is very white. Like, um, I'll just, but when I came to UNT, like, I, it almost like it, it, I didn't, you know, I saw you sent the question. Now, honestly, I, I really had to think about it because I hadn't before. My friend group at UNT was so diverse. Um, and um, the student org and people that I communicated with, and again, my roommates, everyone, it was always so diverse. And it was something that I honestly never really even noticed. Um, I think kind of to like your point, um, I always just like gave everybody my understanding and I was just nice to people. Um, and I just worked with them. Like I, 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 it was something that I really didn't even think of. I just always wanted to help out whoever it was. Um, and just be nice to people. Um, it's so easy to have a very uh, diverse group of friends here. Um, like it's one of my favorite things about UNT. And um, yeah, I, mean, I guess that's all I really have to it. It just came so easy here at UNT. And I, it was one of the things that I just enjoyed the most about it. Absolutely, I definitely agree with you. Uh, I actually made it a goal, true story. I made it a goal that every morning when I wake up, I have to shake hands with somebody that looks nothing like me, sounds nothing like me, and acts nothing like me. I made that my goal because I really want to connect with people. Unity is very diverse. Uh, aspire to be with somebody that looks, that doesn't look anything like you, because there are people who don't look anything like you on the campus. 
because that's what really goes on in real life, <laughs> you know? Um, so that was one of my goals, and I, I implemented it. Now, there were some days, I'll be honest, where I kind of fell short, um, but most days I really wanted to meet somebody new and talk to them. And now, to be, to be more practical, you know, now we have masks, we have different things, so maybe a little difficult. But sometimes it can be something as small as giving a compliment. It's something I do that's very practical. When I look at somebody, the first thing I say to myself is, what can I compliment them on? What can I say about them? So if I look at you, I say, hey, man, that's some nice shoes. Even if I hate your shoes. I'm just saying. Um, that's a way to really start a conversation. And typically they say, hey, yeah, that's nice. And typically the first thing you would do is look at mine. It's natural instinct. And that's how we keep conversations. So everybody I meet, I always ask myself, what can I compliment them on? And we keep going. And the second question I ask myself is, how can I help them? If you have a mindset towards helping people, you will never have a lack. So that was my two major things that I applied. If you apply that as persons, man, y'all, y'all be set. Y'all think that'll be awesome. Yeah. I think I was the same with Tyler. Um, whenever I came here, it was just like my friend group was so diverse as well. So I really didn't even notice it. Like, you know, because we are all so different, came from different states, different countries, different backgrounds. And um, I mean, as we learned more about each other, it just was never like a thing to make it not inclusive, um, which also I grew up around this area. I mean, like I said, my grandparents literally live right down the street. So I was always around here, around the square, on campus. So it was just like, I kind of grew up in this environment. So it wasn't like a complete shock for me. Um, kind of what Brooklyn said, um, but that's just kind of always what I've been around. Like, I mean, it just was kind of a natural thing just to be inclusive. Like everyone is, we're all here. And, um, but I think some of the, or one of the things I tried doing, um, I guess to, I guess kind of further, um, that was, um, you know, within my friend group, um, one of my really good friends, probably one of my best friends, um, she's Muslim and she's from Bangladesh. And so she moved here, uh, I want to say four years ago, just before college. Um, and so she celebrates Eid. And when she first mentioned it, it you know, I think probably through like a social media post, and she said that, you know, Eid was coming up. And so I researched it and I read about it. And like, you know, I read when did they celebrate it? How often? What do you do? What do you think? different greetings that you say. And so I really wanted to kind of like, not not celebrate with her in the aspect of like, I wanna take on that role, but celebrate with her in that she knows like, I care about what you care about and you know, what's important to you is important to me. And so um, now every year, twice a year, um, I, you know, message her on and um, let her know. And so for me, that was like my way of saying like, I love you, like you're my friend. Um, but for her, like it, you know, meant something entirely different and, and just to I guess feel included in, in a country that's not where she was born or where she was from. And especially for students who um I guess aren't in their home country and they're here for college. And um I don't personally know like how hard that is. And um, you know, but just from seeing her, like, you know, she gets homesick and um and so she said, like that, you know, really helps her because it helps her feel at home. I think one thing, just quickly, I don't like UNT again makes it. I think the diversity is so easy. When I joined the bank, like corporate America, you see how, like that's kind of different than UNT. Mm -hmm. um, and so I've actually like, I think I've actually thought about it more in corporate America than I did at UNT, um, and it's something that um, we create initiatives and, and really are thoughtful about that now. And I enjoy being part of that conversation. And um, I think that probably comes from my time here at UNT. It's awesome. Does anybody have any questions for the panel on this subject in particular? Can some of those people that you met like, during the student organizations, uh, student organizations um, group meetups, do some of them like, you know, you talk to them like about like basically are they your clients? So I'm trying to say like like they talk to you about their financial needs, their financial wants. 
Like if they're just in like like in debt, like you can like help them out for a bit. Not like loan them money, but like you can give them like that advice. Um, like right now, or like while I was in like, while I was in school. Uh, right now or while in school. Yeah. Um, Actually, it's been kind of weird with COVID now because we haven't had, we've been talking so much about doing different things. And, um, so actually I have helped like a few students while I've been graduated um, with, <clears throat> honestly, it was mostly moving. So when you move out of college into your job, sometimes there's like a six month gap there where you have no income. Um, so I guess I've maybe given some financial advice there on how to manage it. Um, while I was here, there was a student um, financial uh, student money management yeah, student money management center. Um, that's awesome. Like they help you out um, on how to manage all of, like all of your finances and things like that. Um, and so, I guess because I was majoring in finance and like a lot of people knew me here. I, that question kind of came up a lot. I don't really, the reason I do like banking and things, I'm not like the biggest fan of like giving somebody direct financial advice because um, it's so personal. And so a lot of times I would just recommend that they went there and it was just a success for everybody because that center is like so helpful. So I'm back here. Okay, so, um, the biggest thing that I'm like struggling with, I guess you could say now, is that I went to an early college high school, I guess you could say, so I already have my associate's degree. So when I was doing my financial advising plan with my advisor, she was telling me like, I'm credit level a junior right now, but obviously I'm knowledge level like a freshman, I guess, because I've only taken core classes. I don't know anything marketing related. That's my major. So since knowing I'm credit level a junior and internships are important and experience is important, I was trying to like look at internships now and like apply and stuff because I only have two years, but looking at them and it's like, I don't know any of this stuff. So it's like, is it is it a thing where you apply and then at the end of the year, you probably will know this stuff or like, they say they want you to know this, but really when you get in the job, it's like, they know you're still a student kind of. Cause I was talking to a lady in the marketing symposium or something yesterday about how in the marketing field a lot, it's like, they either value a master's degree or like six years experience. And then she was like, well, a lot of times they'll say six years, but really they want somebody who's just like enthusiastic about the job. Like you don't need six years experience. So it's like, I just don't know what to do with like internships. Like, should I still apply and just see what happens when I get there? I would say absolutely <laughs> yes, yes, and another yes. Uh, one of the things that I always tell uh, my clients is one, do everything you want to do. <laughs> right uh apply for it even if you feel like you know what i'm so underqualified i don't know what i'm gonna do apply for it and then learn um don't sell yourself short before somebody else does that right so don't say well i don't think i'm gonna do it you don't think you're not gonna do it at all so really i would say apply for it and then study up on the company or study up on what they're doing and really learn what apply <laughs> right that's very critical so let me let me add um the, uh, we have a few majors in the college that have a required uh, internship. Marketing is not unless you're going to do professional sales. Okay, um, so anything you do could be for credit, but it doesn't have to be for credit. The starting point, if you're not, if you don't, have, if you want to do one for credit, the starting point for me would be to say go get some experience, even if it's a part-time job doing something marketing, marketing related, even if it's an on-campus job. Okay. When you get ready to declare your major and get into your professional level courses, that's when is a real good time to start searching for the internships. Okay, if you're gonna, especially if you're gonna do it for credit, because you have to have a declared major. Now, here's the thing: in very few cases, do recruiters that my office works with, who are looking for internships, expect the interns to know very much. Okay, that's the purpose for the internship is for you to learn something about the work and really it's about connecting what you learn in the, in the classroom to how that's applied in the real world okay your professors will tell you they can't teach you everything you need to know the purpose for college is so that you can learn what you need you learn 
what you need to learn so that you can learn what you need to know when you go to work. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It's the foundation. Okay? Yeah. Right here, and then this gentleman. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, wait. Um, oh, <laughs> no, <laughs> um, so I talked about earlier, like minoring in some kind of technology, but I'm I'm not good at technology at all. So do you have any like advice for like maybe getting better at that? Or should you just go? Do it. I am not promoting this, but TikTok has taught me so many things on Excel. Like I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Uh, so bad, but. Yeah, I honestly, you just got it. Like, you just have to like work through a program. I guess like that would be it. Yeah, because I I tried like the the free like online programs, but like I I don't have the commitment to do those because they're free. Yeah, I think the, like the best thing about it too is like you you literally need nobody else to like help you with that. Like, it's you can just do it whenever you want. But yeah. Um. I also. If there'll be classes here that you'll take that will incorporate a lot of those programs into them. So, I mean, I learned all tricks, which is another um, program, um, Tableau, Quick Excel, of course. Um, so, all those different programs, uh, the professors will incorporate them into the, their classes and we'll have different projects and things. Um, so, of course, it depends on the class, but um, that's just something to kind of keep in mind. And, um, the BCIS classes here, which I think you can speak to of them, um, just as a general business major, um, you'll learn Excel in those and some other things. So um, that is something just to you know be aware of. It you'll you'll learn Excel by the time you graduate for sure. Yeah. Oh, the basics. Yeah. So did you did you just have a question? You can go first. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what are some good websites to study on uh, for classes like like? Uh, I was looking at Investopedia because I want to learn how to invest. I don't. Is that a good source? Um, my take. No. <laughs> I I think like there's like Investopedia or like Wall Street Journal. Like just, honestly, just reading like Wall Street Journal. Like read the news. Um, there's a ton of podcasts out there. Um, I listen to a lot of podcasts. Like uh, that's kind of where I learned. Along with investment stuff, like stay on track. Do you guys have anything to add? I would say Investopedia give you more of the definition of things and might explain concepts and topics. Um, whereas investing, like I think, in and of itself is very uh, reliant on like, market sentiment and how. The economy is going, how people are feeling. And so, kind of just like what you were saying, like listening to the news and reading Wall Street Journal is good. Um, all of that will, I think, tell you more of like where the, the direction the market is going in versus like Investopedia, which will maybe explain like an underlying um, concept versus maybe what you should invest in or something like that. You read some books. Look up books on investment. You can order some books on Amazon. And uh, it's even investment one-on-one, right? Uh, get those books and really study them and read them. And as you read, apply also. Try and apply. And I think you'll be great. I also think it's fun to like, when you just listen to the news, like when I was in college, um, I had Jack Birch, he's a professor. I don't know if he's still doing some teaching, but um, he's like a private equity guy in the DFW here. Um, and he's like, hey, I know he's wacky, but Jim Cramer does mad money at five o'clock every day. Um, and I, just, I thought the funnest thing about learning finance here was like, I would just listen to that, like on the podcast version. Sometimes you have no idea what he's talking about. And then you get in class and they teach you like a term or a ratio or a way to analyze a company. And it's like, boom, connected. Like I've read about that before. And then you know it. Um, so I think that's where it comes in. And I do believe that all students in the College of Business or the college gives you a subscription to Wall Street Journal. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know how many students take advantage of it. I'm sure they take advantage of it. And the Bloomberg, the Bloomberg room up, up there, you get a free, you get free access. Um, that's like, by the way, that's like a thirty thousand dollar subscription a year um, for anybody else. Um, it's really useful. 
that, that's a, that is a good point. Glad you brought that up, Tyler. Student Investment Group is a student organization, and that's what they do. They invest something like they have about a portfolio of about seven hundred fifty thousand dollars of university money that they are investing. I want to say university money coming from the foundation side of things, right? Okay. Do you have a question? Oh, I, it was kind of like what you're saying that some majors have to do a uh, internship. Which ones do you know? All of the supply chain majors have to do an internship. So logistics and supply chain management, um, uh, uh, aviation logistics and operations and supply chain management. That's they have a required internship. Professional selling, which is a sub okay. major under marketing, has a, has a required internship. So the, those are the only ones as of now that you have required. Some of the majors are talking about it, but we're not there yet. And so we'll just sort of have to see how that lays out. All right, we're at time. Does anybody else have any questions? Yes, sir. So Josh, right? Yes. Okay, so you, you're doing marketing, and then you earlier you mentioned that you would like to like what you know now of real estate. You would have liked to do done real estate. Is that what you said? No, no, she's done real estate. Oh no. I, Oh, never mind. I got it confused. Then. No, what was your question? No, like I thought you said, like, wait. Would I have done real estate? Yeah. Uh, not as a major, but I would have studied more. I think real estate is very, very broad. Um, there's many ways to go about it. I'm sure she could speak more on that a little bit more. But now you can even get a real estate license. And I'm, I can get a license just say she got a license, you know, and, and I didn't study up on it. Um, I think I would have learned more, a little bit more about it. Um, so I'm more well versed at it. Um, and that would have given me a little more of an edge. Uh, now, as a major, I'm not sure if I would have majored on it, though. I'm not sure. Yeah. 